We work hard as physicians to take care of the health and well-being of our patients. But when it comes to our money, do we have the same condition of care? Probably, probably not. Let's change that together. Welcome to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast, where we'll fight and advocate for your financial literacy. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. Thanks for being here. Let's jump into the show. Hey guys, I want to welcome you guys to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. We've got a great episode this week. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button as well as the notifications bell and be sure to like, comment, and share if you like this episode and we'll get into this week's sponsor and show. This week's episode is sponsored by CityVest. CityVest has quickly become the most popular and best way for doctors to invest in top-performing real estate, private equity funds that are usually reserved for institutional investors. This unique access to investing in these institutional funds is available for the first time ever through CityVest easy and secure online investment platform. CityVest does the hard work of conducting due diligence and vetting the investments. They even get a third-party due diligence report that is posted on their website. As a result of aggregating a several million dollar investment amount into their access funds, CityVest gains access to investing in the institutional investment and is able to negotiate better investment terms such as a 12% preferred return. You can check them out at cityvest.com or go to the link in the show notes below. Now on to the show. Before we begin today's content, here is a quick disclaimer. The information and material presented here is for informational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. The content is not a recommendation to buy or to sell. Some of the content may be for credited investors only or may be sponsored posts. Every investment carries risks. Results have not been verified. So carefully weigh those risks against your investment goals and objectives and see if acting on the information matches with your investment thesis. Do your due diligence prior to investing. And as always, do not invest more than you can afford to lose. So welcome everybody to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. And I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I started this podcast with freedom in mind, which encompasses four types of freedom, financial, time, location, emotional freedom. We started out with a group of physicians, grew to 16,000 followers, and now I've opened it up to everybody. So physicians comprise a part of it. And now it has investors, entrepreneurs, business leaders. So you'll hear about um, Ron Macklin today, who is our guest. And so... Uh, let me pull up his bio and I'll let him introduce him in more detail. So Ron Macklin, he's a leader, he's a connector, podcaster, coach, uh, entrepreneur, innovator, and um, and he, I'll let him get started. Uh, Ron, welcome. Oh, thank you, Christopher. So first, the most important part of my life is uh, I'm married to my wife, Connie. We've been together, well, I joke about it, but we've been together forever. We've been married <laughs> for 32 years, and but we've started dating when we were 15. So, uh, we, we, and um, that's kind of like the important part of my life. And that's kind of the why we do, I do what I do. We've got three kids. Um, we currently, they're, they're adult grown kids and we're currently living in, in Overland Park, Kansas. Um, I grew up in uh, Wichita, Kansas, where um, my first career was, uh, I was a football player. So I played football and went to school to play football and ended up at uh, first a junior college on a scholarship and then on to uh, Kansas State on a scholarship uh -huh. and played football there. And then um, at the same time, I, I finished up playing. I finished up my engineering degree and I became uh, an engineer and became a field service engineer. So what that means is I traveled around the country working on big power plants like nuclear power plants, uh, both the primary side and the secondary side. So the part that has uranium in it that makes steam and the part that has a turbine in it that makes electricity. So yeah. I traveled around all over the United States for, I don't know, somewhere around 10, nine, 10 years. 
and uh, went back and got my master's. We all had small kids at home. And then at, after that, um, I was kind of growing my career and growing my, my identity in the, in the world. And I made an offer to go to Europe to work for three years. Um, moved my whole family over. Uh, we spent uh, three years in Dusseldorf, Germany. Um, I really began to notice my own culture once I was no longer in my culture. I began to notice, uh, we all did, begin to notice what it means to, for all those stories we have that are just ready at hand that you don't know that they're ready at hand. And I also, at that point, I was beginning to build my skill to say, how do I build a relationship with somebody that's deeper? I mean, not like casual, but like deeper, trusting. Somebody you could call in the middle of the night if you needed to, or you have a question, you go, I need to call that person. And you call them and they answer because they're looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, from there, I moved back to from Germany to Houston, Texas. Uh, took yeah. on a group there, which was, and this is about the third time I've done this, where I ran a group that was like, well, one of the worst groups. <laughs> and financially, worst group, uh, mood, worst group, and um, location, worst group. We were down the <laughs> on the ship channel. So if you can imagine, my office was 20 feet from the actual ship channel. Uh, if you've been to Houston, Texas, you'll, you'll know what that is. Yeah. And within about three years, we... Uh, turned the group around um, and, and it wasn't me who did it. It was the group that was there. And we like the way we looked at it was how do we make this a fun place to work? How do we make it profitable? And I knew that it wasn't me who had the answers. It was the team that had the answers. So how do we embody them in a manner that they can like work together and take care of each other and build those skills and to build trust. Like I talked about earlier with um, community connection with somebody where you could actually trust them. And we worked on that for the whole group. And about five years in, so around 2000, I say 2009 or 10, we won the award for the best place to work in Houston, Texas by the, oh. by the Houston Business Journal. Okay. And like we, I did that for, for probably another three or four years. Um, still living in Houston, actually. At that time, we were living in Kingwood. And then we, we wanted to, I wanted something different. I was ready to try my, my skills and something in a different part of the business. So we went from being a service company which is the company I work for with Siemens uh, to, I went to a company called Calpine and they're a generator. They generate electricity. So I moved over there as a vice president, um, had a lot of fun, uh, grew, uh, took a group again, that was in trouble. And everybody said they they can't do it. And for the third time, we doubled our profitability in about three years. <laughs> so at that point uh, we loved Houston. Uh, we loved where we were, were in Houston, lived in the West U area. Our kids were kind of off in college and living overseas and doing stuff like that. Um, and uh, had a, a friend that was um, needing some help back in Kansas City. So we moved back to Kansas, which is not where we grew up, but Wichita, Kansas is where we grew up. And took on a role there for about three years and helped them to basically move their business into a more organized manner. Uh, profitability, um, understanding finances, being all that part of it. At that time, I knew it was a space for me to use what I had been building, which is the, the skill to build connections with people and to turn that into a business. So at that time, I, I left the role as president of a, a medical device company and started my own business called uh, Macklin Connection. And we currently live in Overland Park, Kansas, and we've been in business for just shy of four years. Fascinating. So what, you, what you're describing is um, in, uh, a very relationship Based business where you're teaching people how to uh, lead and how to strategy, you know, based on human connection, which is very, it's very, I find your journey very interesting. So uh, why, why did you choose this, uh, this, this uh, particular area and, and what, uh, what made you, what led you to, to focus on it? First time I realized that I didn't have a very good network of help around me, uh, connections, um, what I noticed was there one, a bunch of men, all engineers, uh, mainly white engineers. <laughs> and even the like financial group was ex white engineers that are now in the finance group. And I kept going like, well, how about marketing? What about advertising? And what about, um, um, accounting and what all these other domains. And I realized I didn't know anybody and I didn't know how to know anybody. So I didn't set out to say, I'm going to start this business you know, 12 years from now, I'm going to start this business. It's going to be all around building connections. I was just trying to do it in a way that could take care of myself. 
take mm-hmm. care of my wife and to take care of my kids. That's the only reason I did it. And it was probably around, I'd say, I'd say around nine, 10 years ago, people started to ask me to speak about it. And I was going to speak about what? And they go, the thing you do. I go, what, what thing is that? He goes, <laughs> you have the best network and connections of anybody we know. I go, I'm like, no, I don't. And they go, yeah, you do. I go, she goes, and people were asking me, like, could you come speak about it? I'm like, hmm, I don't know what that means. Let me think about that. Yeah. And in the meantime, I began to notice I had put together a strategy. I had put together kind of what I call a framework to be how do I build a relationship with somebody? And I had told people about it. Like I'd say, well, this is what I do. And what I noticed was you can't tell people things. Like, like they got to figure it out. They got to discover it. So about seven years ago, I took on the challenge of how can I make this something that people could discover? And the first time I, I set up to run the program with somebody, um, I actually set it up with three people who were like really close to me, right? Like I was really taking a risk, right? All my best friends were hanging out with me doing this course. And they got to the end of it. And one of them said, um, actually is a CFO for ADM. He said, uh, you need to write a book about this. Because this is, this is, he goes, I didn't build a new network at work, but I got a new relationship with my son. And I was blown away. I was going like, wow, they're using it with their kids. Ooh, all the pressure of all family just weighted down on top of my shoulders as I was saying, like, how do I turn this into something where I can make a difference for other people? And I set out and said, well, if I could do it for 125 people in the next three months, maybe there's something here. And we did. And we, we had like 145 people go through our program and learn something and Back then, that was, you know, so six, seven years ago, it was so simple and so basic and, and there wasn't enough for people to really get something, but they got to the end of it and they said, I want more. And then I created another course and I said, yeah, that's good. I want more. And then we get to the end of that course. They go, I think I got it. Where can I practice? I go, okay, let me create an arena. So we have a, an arena program where you can get in every once a week and just practice. Um, and so that's what we started. And we're now up to four full-time employees, two part-time employees, no, six, excuse me, five full-time employees and two part-time employees. And it's continuing to grow. And, and we're just, we're having a, well, one, having a lot of fun learning because we were created the business from a standpoint of how can we help people connect to each other? And the first place they start is they got to connect to themselves. It may sound kind of weird to some people, but if you don't have a relationship with yourself, it's hard to connect with anybody else. So we've started out to, to, to do that, right? And we created a program and people love the program. But everybody we talked to, like they, they'd sign up, but you know, it takes a lot of time to go out and talk to everybody. So we tried to use more social media and stuff. And so now we're focusing on how do we present ourselves in the world so that people can find us easy? so that we can, they can see what we do and what we're up to. Because it's, although it is definitely a trust business, like it's about learning how to trust each other, how to trust yourself. But it doesn't speak in, like, like they don't know what it is. Like if you go to the store and you go, I need flour, people know what flour is. I need gasoline, they know what gasoline is. You want to learn how to build a connection with yourself and others? What? Like there's, a, there's this emptiness there. Although everybody who goes through, they, they they really light up from it. And I, I can also talk to you if you want to a little bit later about p- part of the things I do for my retirement is I, I invest in real estate. And so I, I do that as my, my hobby. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. So that, that's how I got here. That's how I got to this, this space right here. I am today. Uh-huh. And we're looking forward to what, what we see coming in the future. And, and that is as, as the world shifts from now we have artificial intelligence, we have, um, we have the internet, the, the cloud-based uh, computing, we have robots, we have all this stuff, right? What humans are going to do in the future is going to be different than what it is like five years ago. And yeah. one of the things that we don't really do well is teach each other how to connect with each other. I mean, there's not like an eighth grade course you go through where you go, and this is how you build a relationship with somebody. And 
with, even though we're very connected, like we have iPhones and Androids and desktop computers and uh, iWatches and all this other kinds of information access, we, we find that people are really putting up a lot of shields. Like if you look at their webpage, we call a shield something to hide how you really feel, the scared, the nervousness, the fear you have inside you. And you look at their, their, their Facebook page and everything, everything looks so good. Everything looks so nice. But inside, everybody's scared. It was a um, pretty significant day in 1996. I finished up my MBA here at uh, Rockhurst University. And uh, I went to a, a meeting with a guy, uh, speaker, his name was uh, Bowen White. Um, he, had, he had an alter ego called Dr. Jerko. And he was a doctor, a psychologist. And it was invited, like all the people, the powerful people in Kansas City and me, right? Like, I, I don't know how I got into the room, but I was in there. But I was sitting in the front of the room because I was in the place, you know, like, fill me up. Like, like, give me everything you got here. Come on, fill me up. And he started talking about fear. And I was going like, oh, my God, he knows I'm afraid. And he goes, um, something that just shifted my whole world. And it is never, I've never been the same human from that moment on. And that was... How many people in the room are afraid and they think there's something wrong with them that they're afraid. And so I'm sitting there going like, do I raise my hand? I'll be the only person in here. Right. If I'm going to raise my hand. So I just slowly raise my hand up. Right. I remember Bowen kind of looked right down at me and said, look around. Cause I was sitting in the front, right? Every person in the room had their hand up. They yeah. were executives from all over Kansas City, right? Yeah. And what I noticed at that moment, being afraid is part of being human. But we don't talk about it like it's that way. And that's part of being able to connect with yourself is to pull your fears out. And I, I've met a lot of what I call successful, maybe powerful um, people in the world. And the more powerful and successful they are, the more they talk about their fears, mm -hmm. they don't, they don't let their fears run them. They have fears. It's a big difference. That's a little bit about me. Yeah. We hope you don't mind this brief interruption from one of our affiliates. Today's affiliate is studentloanadvice.com. Studentloanadvice.com is a company powered by the white code investor that specializes in helping professional students such as doctors, dentists, and other healthcare professionals navigate the complex and oftentimes confusing student loan landscape. They offer a consultation as well as services to help you save money when consolidating and paying back your student loans through their different options. You can go to their website, studentloanadvice.com forward slash FFF. P. That's again, studentloanadvice.com forward slash FFFP to find out more, get signed up on their email list or schedule a call with Andrew Paulson. Now back to our show. Well, interesting. So um, let's see here. Uh, one of the interesting things you talked about is, um, this is uh, so we talked about the Macklin method, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll give a link to the um, to the uh, listeners in the show notes. And the other thing is what's interesting is um, you have something called uh, teal or fifth revolution organizations. Can you describe that? And um, I think it's very uh, relevant in terms of leading teams, organizations. So tell us more about that. Yeah, great. L love to. So let's go back um, about 12,000 years and it's a time we had the first kind of, a, I call it an industry. And that was we gathered up grain as humans. We gathered up grain and we picked out the best ones and replanted them and then ate the rest. And then farming was created. Right. The wow. next, the next one to come along like 10,000 years later or more, right. Was this thing called wind and steam. Like we had power greater than an animal. Right. And it changed the whole world. Steam power, wind power, all these kinds of just fundamental powers that are greater than a horse shifted the whole world. I mean, just dramatically changed what was possible, how far you could mine, 
that you could travel, that you could, you know, move in the world, have, you know, train, uh, trains and all that kind of stuff. Huge difference. Then there was the next one called electricity. So now you could have that power and you could transmit it to different places. Whole new world. Right? Yeah. And it's, but it's built on the last one, which is steam and wind. And then there was this next one called computers. And that's relatively recent. Like in our lifetime, computers became a, th- a space of possibilities. And that's kind of the, so you had the first one, wind and steam, second one, which is the uh, electricity, third one, which is your um, computers, right? And now you could have things that could do multiple things, right? So you have a computer in your car that runs it. You have a computer in your refrigerator that runs it. You have a computer in your air conditioner that runs it. You have, uh, computers are everywhere, right? We're, we're using them right now to talk to each other. And the next one, like that's a third. Fourth one is AI, robots, and communi- like um, um, artificial intelligence. And we're using uh, some of those right now because we're going through the cloud to talk to each other. And we're using software that's in the cloud. Where you, all this stuff, this is the fourth industrial revolution, which means everybody can communicate and connect to anybody anywhere all the time. That doesn't mean we have the skills to know how to communicate and connect, but we can. It's just a whole new world for what's out there. The, that's the first, second, third, and fourth. The fifth business revolution is self-led teams. So it's not a technology. It's a organization that cuts out the hierarchy. You have somebody who creates a vision and everybody else works together to solve problems. And everybody takes, takes care when it's time to lead, they lead. When it's time to follow, they follow. And what they found is those teams that are self-directed and self-led Will out produce, out invent, out create, out uh, solve problems, than all the other ones combined. So those teams that are created and are self directed, those teams are really changing the world. And what they're finding is the people who work there love it, and they look forward to going to work because they're going to solve some fun problem. They're going to they're going to be in a place where they're going to create something that they get they get acknowledged for. But they also it's a challenge. I mean, nobody wants to be handed a check. Everybody wants to do something and contribute to the world. And um, a gentleman by the name of Frederick Lalo wrote a book called Reinventing Organizations. He calls those that what I call possible because of the fifth business revolution, those self-directed teams, he calls them teal organizations because he looks at humans as like a developing cycle. So there was yeah. originally like the, the wolf pack and then you had the the kings who ruled, and then there were um, executives and, and hierarchy structures, right? And then there were um, like family-based or team-based organizations, right? Oh. And then there's this new level of teal. And the teal is like those team, and it's where people love to go to work. People don't, like, nobody wants to be used as a tool. They want to contribute. They want to be valued. And in a teal organization, Everybody gets to do so, and you love doing your job, whatever it is. Or you create your own business, and you have your own teal team. And those are already starting. In fact, I'd say some of the teal teams have been around for 15 to 20 years. And what they're, what they're noticing is they're outproducing their competition. Basically, it's like the Googles, the Metas, the, these, a lot of these organizations have innovated uh, their cultures and their work process So, which is what you're describing. So this is a very fascinating discussion. I know a lot of, um, you've talked in a lot about the Macklin method, which I know a lot of people will be interested in, um, as well as, you know, this concept of uh, the TEAL organization. So um, how can people find out more about you, read about you, get in contact with you and potentially work with you? Oh, thanks. So uh, the way to reach out to me, you can go to our website at uh, MacklinConnection.com. Uh, you could also send me an email at uh, Ron at MacklinConnection.com. And there's also a place to sign up if you want to you know, connect with us on the website at it's base. And we've got some several different programs to go through. We have one where we bring a business through and a group through our programs. We have individual coaching. So sometimes people go through our programs and they come out and say, that's really good, but how do I really apply it in different situations? And so we have uh, coaches that actually can help work with them to help them master it in their group, but also master it for themselves. 
Um, it's one of those situations where we normally focus on business and business development and business growth. Most people come back and say, yeah, that's really cool. And I love it. I used it with my family. Um, but that's not our pitch. Like that's not our goal in life, but it's, you're more than welcome to use it in that space. Um, our, our sweet spot is kind of like small family owned businesses, uh, small group owned businesses. And that that's kind of where, where we're at. Cause a lot of times there's, there's a lot of tension inside of those companies and a lot of frustration, uh, not a lot of trust. And those are the groups that we can be the biggest help for. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, for all the listeners out there, um, we're going to put uh, Ron's uh, resources and links in the show notes. And so, Ron, this has been a fascinating conversation. Any final parting words of advice before we call it a day? No. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Chris, that you, Christopher, that you invited me in. Uh, I love the conversation and uh, I love what you're doing. And thank you for creating a space where people can learn and learn where to invest, but also like learn how to, to join each other's and learn from each other. Awesome. So with that, I say thank you. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak yeah. to your group. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much. And we look forward to hearing about your future success. Thank you. What a fantastic show. I hope you enjoyed our very special guest. Just remember, as a shout out to our this week's sponsor, CityVest.com. CityVest gives you access to the best real estate private equity funds with enhanced investment terms, verified due diligence, and lower risk. You can check them out at CityVest.com or click on the link in the show notes below to hear about their upcoming investment offerings. If you enjoyed that episode, don't forget, that's just the free content. We also have paid premium content subscription with better guests, information, updates, and discussions that can't be accessed anywhere else. You can subscribe to our premium content by clicking on the link in the show notes below to just subscribe. Just a quick note, members who sign up for the bottom floor price introductory the first year will be grandfathered into that price for life. I expect the monthly subscription amount to increase quickly next year and the year after, so don't delay. I'm excited that you made it for another episode. You are truly the best. If you've been following the show for a while, you know that my passion is to bring you the education you need to find your path to financial freedom. Please come back week after week for new content, new resources, and great guests. Until then, if you haven't already, please be sure to check out the website, www.drchrislewmdphd.com for more support. I'll see you next week.